okay so uh, what we had done in our last class we had discussed about uh, what exactly the cloud is and uh, why to use the cloud computing okay so we had a lots of discussion on the cloud and as well as then the devops in our last class so what we'll do today today we'll get more details about cloud and we'll see what are the benefits we'll get using the cloud computing platform okay and what are the service provider in the current market and who is leading uh, in the market uh, race and what are the things we are going to achieve it and how we can get created our first account in our AWS cloud platform okay so let's start so uh, let me just make it the slide slow okay so let's see uh, what are the benefits of using the cloud the first thing is the scalability so when you say about the scalability what this scalability means we can increase and decrease the resources as per the demand means when the company gets new client or new requirement or the application whatever the company has or the product whatever the company has has new demand the customer has increased lots of uh, think about any e-commerce site okay uh, if there is some kind of festivals or some things like you will be seeing if if there is some discounts or some offers are going on lots of guys or lots of people lots of customers will log into the server and uh, try to purchase right that time what will happen it will the demand will increase okay so what we can use and what are the benefits we can get it from the cloud we can increase and decrease the resources as per the demand if the demand is increased and we need more resources we can go ahead and immediately we can increase the resources in the cloud and if the demand is goes down we can decrease the resources because why should we pay extra amount for the resources whatever we have procured right better to let it go so no need to pay unnecessary for the resources which we do not need scale up and scale down automatically okay so what is then we don't have to pay unnecessary for the resources we which we do not need and whenever we need we can scale up and scale down automatically we can by using different functionality like auto scaling and all these things we can scale up and scale down automatically the next thing is the storage what are the benefits it provides a storage what is exactly the storage is it is same for the storage as well we can increase and decrease the storage as per our need suppose currently we have storage uh, one terabyte of data currently and um, similarly demand is increased we got lots of resources lots of customers and all these things what will happen based on that suppose our storage is uh, almost full okay and we need more storage we can go ahead and directly we can increase the storage whatever the resources we have provisioned from the cloud service provider okay so what happens low cost storage backup being provided so when we are going to use the storage service from the from any service provider they provide the low cost service that is storage backup service they provide okay then what next the data recovery so whenever the first thing is that is in a company right whenever we are working there will be multiple data any application any products anything we all work on data only right so we always think about how efficiently we can back up our data we can recover our data in case of any data loss okay so what if happens what it provides is no need to worry about any data loss cloud data loss prevention that is dlp cloud data loss prevention helps keep an organization sensitive and critical information safe from cyber attacks so last class chandan was asking how secure how 
we can uh, you know um, uh, secure our data and all so all this uh, i was also telling uh, in our last class this cloud providers they provide different kind of policies okay so one of them is actually cloud data loss prevention so dlp policy which helps keep an organization sensitive and critical information safe from the cyber attacks also what uh, happens one yeah. question yeah, yeah, sorry please. to interrupt you ranjit no uh, one question i have mm -hmm. uh, so this dlp data loss policy it's an uh, vendor vendor based or it they have some uh, uh, like uh, international standard it will be international standard it is not vendor based it will be international standard everyone has to follow the same policy okay Okay. most okay. of the organizations okay. uh, not only most of the organizations overall every organization they follow the uh, data loss prevention policy and uh, if you will be working in a uh, bfs domain okay any banking domain and all they actually focus on this dlp you have to you uh, know um, study on this dlp and have to uh, go with dlp uh, before you are going to assign any project and all okay So this is very important for any financial company and any uh, banking domain or anything we ever working on that uh, they follow this uh, dlp method dlp policies okay, okay. one more question i have next yeah. according only mm -hmm. uh, hello yeah yeah please thank you uh, one more question i have ranjit mm -hmm. uh, so you were saying like we are uh, the cloud is scalable so uh, i presume like uh, if i uh, like if any of the organization mm -hmm. has uh, taken a service from a vendor cloud vendor so there will be like how they do a contract like uh, because like a contract goes uh, like uh, some some of the spaces mm -hmm. so in terms of space here it is scalable like whenever we want we can acquire more space and uh, if we are not using we can uh, uh, leave those spaces yes so how does how does according to organization level how how do they do this ah uh, yes exactly thank you for asking this okay guys so what happens actually um in our last class okay so you heard about a term like pay as you go or pay as you use okay so here there will be no uh, agreement or nothing will be like that okay that's why the service they provide whatever you use you have to pay for that suppose in case of scalability you need more resources more servers to be added more storage to be added so whatever the storage you get from today and you used for one month or 60 days or uh, one year up to one year or 60 days you have to pay on the day you stop using it you don't have to pay anything you don't need to pay anything you got my point right that's why the scalability it yeah, offers yeah. light whenever you need you get it you use it pay whatever you used like you are renting a house and you are staying for one month you are paying for one month rent only right when you leave that house you don't have to pay anything similarly whenever you get any resources any thing from the cloud you have to use that one and pay for that and if you don't use that one you don't have to pay for that one. simple things okay also what happens so is it clear chandan thank you yeah thank you so what yeah, happens yeah. here thanks thanks a lot so it provides a great feature to recovery your data in case of any data loss happened it provides a data recovery feature also okay and uh, what next data security so it is must for every company when we comes for a security okay a crucial component of cloud data security is data integrity what is that preventing unauthorized modification or deletion and ensuring that data remains as it was when originally uploaded if you are going to use any cloud service from any service provider they are like uh, international standard they have to follow that rules and they will never touch your data even though they did something and you find it out 
then they have to pay a huge amount of penalty if you charge or if you case against them if they found guilty okay that's why every company they follow their rules and regulations because see that is a very simple thing if we are organ we working any organization right in any organization what will happen we have also clients right we have also customers so what the customers feel that we provide whatever the service to them there will be no discrepancies will be there right and we follow the our policies and we provide uh, a huge amount of like the security the uh, everything whatever a customer need whatever a client need right we also provide to our client similarly if you are going to use any service provider for any sir um, uh, uh, cloud service provider we are the customer for them and they have to treat similarly they have to follow the integrity otherwise it will not means they if once they are blamed they are gone right so data security is much and you have to trust on them and most of the vfs companies vfs domain like the banking companies they don't uh, actually go to the public cloud they use their own private cloud i'll just talk about this public private and hybrid cloud models how it is okay upcoming slides so uh, what happens here uh, so next is maintenance well maintenance provided by the cloud service provider to maintain your data and resources the maintenance cloud offers a unique opportunity for your maintenance team to meet uptime and production demands without sacrificing quality of work or maintenance kpis so guys if you have your on premises data center if you have your own data center what you have to do to maintain the data center to maintain the network to maintain the server storage the house the cables the everything you have to hire lots of resources manpower right you have to hire lots of manpower to maintain your own data center so here what we are uh, what they are providing we have to use their services and they are providing all maintenance you don't have to worry about that any kind of any server maintenance or any maintenance um, storage maintenance any network maintenance they provide and that, that is their headache that's the real benefit of the cloud whatever we are going to use it we have to just you will just get lots of other things and so you love uh, to jump into cloud and you'll forget about your uh, creating one server or anything you have to just uh, get your laptop you don't have to worry about any number of servers you can create any number of uh, machines you can create whether it is linux unix or windows you can just get it and work wherever you go just log into the server and work you don't have to worry about anything okay and you don't have to store anything in your system also i'll show you everything and you love cloud going forward okay so the next thing is what are the cloud service providers <coughs> what are the cloud service providers so in the market i have uh, listed uh, very few around uh, seven cloud service provider there are many more there are many more even uh, tomorrow ankit can create uh, a big server at, uh, in his house or somewhere and he can provide services and he will be a cloud service provider okay so there are many cloud service provider small small cloud service provider in the market but i have just uh, uh highlighted few of them which is which are the big uh, uh, you know giant in the market so first one is the aws azure and uh, gcp google cloud digital ocean ibm oracle and linode all these are the cloud service providers so which service provider we are going to learn we are going to learn this time that aws okay i'll show you why we will go with aws Okay, so 
what next uh, which are popular in the market so there are three um, service providers cloud service provider which are popular one is the aws which is leading in the market next one is azure and the third one is google cloud okay these three are leading and popular in the market okay and uh, aws is now leading in the market so the type of clouds whatever clouds one is the public cloud private cloud and hybrid cloud model these are the cloud models okay type of clouds so the public cloud why and when to use the public cloud i'll just explain further in the class so public cloud is no capital expenditure to scale up application can be quickly provisioned and deprovisioned organization organizations pay only for what they use public cloud okay so no capital expenditure is required to scale up and applications can be quickly provisioned and deprovisioned so organizations uh, organizations pay only for what they use okay so one second guys Okay, so the pub public cloud is, um, so you don't have to pay uh, for, uh, like you don't have to spend on your um, uh, infrastructure or anything. You have to just go to the market, get it uh, whatever you want. But in case of private cloud, what happens? Hardware must be purchased for startup and maintenance. You have to get your own hardware set up in your on-premises, like in your data centers when you are going for a private cloud organizations have complete control over resources and security organizations are responsible for hardware maintenance and updates okay so in case of public cloud these things you don't have to worry about everything will be provided by the cloud provider cloud service provider okay you have to only use their service but in case of private cloud you are going to set off their services in your premises in your premises right what will happen you have to ha purchase the hardware you have to uh, know uh, whatever the services they provide it, it, or everything will be under your control so most of the companies they feel their data is more sensitive and they cannot bear the loss of the data they should go with private cloud so most of the banking organizations, banks, they always prefer to go with private cloud, okay? Because their data are more sensitive. If they lose some data, there will be huge loss to the company, okay? And company brand also. So that's why most of the company, they uh, banking domains and all, they go with private cloud. And most of the startup companies, most of the startup companies and other small companies and also companies which is uh, like uh, uh, you know generating the small small applications and productions which are providing service to, to services to others they go with public cloud why they spend more money on the uh, uh, things which is not required right they immediately go to the public cloud and get the details to be done and uh, use it and then deliver it so give let me give you an example suppose uh, one of the company xyz uh, it has uh, 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 10 clients okay it has 10 clients and uh, suppose that company is making some applications and production and selling in the market or or giving to the uh, after the product uh, product is designed or application is designed and developed is to deliver to the client so what he needs whenever you will be working there will suppose uh, uh, 50 uh, employees are working there and he has to use multiple servers multiple tools multiple resources what he has to do he has to he, he is not required that company doesn't require to go for a big infrastructure setup or go for a big private cloud setup and then repair it uh, and uh, make it right instead what he can do 
you can go to the market uh, cloud market get whatever the servers he needs okay whatever the tools he needs whatever the storage he needs whatever the uh, uh, things required for the client to develop and deliver get the things choose what is the cheapest thing to do use that one develop the applications as much as possible with lower cost and deliver to the client with good quality you don't have to uh, spend time on your infrastructure maintenance you don't have to spend time or thinking about what is the market is going on with the data and all these things right you have to only focus on your quality of coding quality of delivery quality of the product right so that's what the good and beauty of the cloud whenever you need even tomorrow you can open up a small company and you can go to the market uh, and get some services from them use it okay and very you will not really uh, i'm using few of them services for the last five to six years i'm paying very hardly uh, two to three thousand or four thousand every year okay i'm using lots of services still paying only four to five thousand a year uh, an year uh, to the cloud okay i'll show you what are the services i'm using also so that's whatever the private cloud whatever the hybrid cloud okay you'll get questions guys uh, uh, remember uh, and all these things you have to just uh, remember yourself okay um, then um, what you do i would always suggest you whatever things you are learning or make a note of everything okay make a note of everything not telling about in the writing in pen and paper you have your laptop in front of you just make a note in the right type and make your own ppt make your own ppt and don't expect me to share my ppt okay because that that's what i'll make you lazy and uh, you'll not learn i always insist people suggest people to make your own notes by your own language what you feel what you think and what you understood that you have to write it that you have to explain whenever you are going to the interview okay so what is the hybrid cloud provides the most flexibility organizations determine where to run their applications organizations control security compliance or legal requirement okay so it is a mix of public and private cloud so you have to decide what are the stuffs is required to be public and what are the stuffs to be private think about one application okay <clears throat> one application whenever you are designing it will have a front end and it will have a back end some business logic will be there okay and uh, what you will do if you keep your front end in a public domain in a public cloud will it harm anything no right because you are only giving your front end or uh, there because there is no data linked to that it is only will be into the public facing public will connect through the front end but your back end the database the data the business logic everything to be secured that you can put in the private cloud in the private domain or private areas where nobody can access except your ui through the ui only right so that you have to design it which you should go for a hybrid cloud which you should go for a private cloud which one you should decide for public one okay we'll get all the more details uh, going forward uh, okay so now types of service and this is very important guys types of services first one is iaas that is called infrastructure as a service infrastructure as a service i a a s so what is this infrastructure as a service it provides only a base infrastructure it provides only a base infrastructure end user have to configure and manage the platform deploy the applications on it so you only what they providing it providing the infrastructure to you and then it's your responsibility to use that infrastructure to uh, host your uh, create your own server create your own network create your uh, own applications and 
deploy it okay you have to create your own platform there so they are giving just infrastructure means they are just giving suppose a land to you a space to you a just um, um, unfurnished house to you so you are taking that on and design as for your need and you are building your house and you are uh, doing the interior design you are doing the exterior design as for your need as for your requirement similarly they are just providing one infrastructure to you and you have to set up whatever you need okay next is saas that is called software as a service software as a service so software as a service is on demand software managed by vendors so what here will happen in case of software as a service you don't have to worry about infrastructure you don't have to worry about server you don't have to worry about not network and anything what you are using you are just using their software you have to only focus and use that software and the rest of the things they will take care the rest of the things they will take care and it will be managed by them only on demand software is managed by vendors okay you are only going to use suppose gmail example that gmail or saap salesforce whatever you are using you are just using the application you are not bothering about the infrastructure you are not bothering about the infrastructure not bothering about the storage or anything right everything will be managed by them only in case of any issues happened with the application you have to only complain or raise a request or incident with the vendor or the provider okay next one is the pass that's called platform as a service so the platform as a service it provides a platform allowing end user to develop run and manage applications without complexity of building and maintaining the infrastructure so actually the pass should be in between ias and saas okay it it should be in between the ias and saas so here we got the in case of ias what happens we got the infrastructure as a service because we what is getting the land and in um, land and the unfurnished house and we are just building it out it everything whatever we need in case of platform as a service they are giving you a platform and you have to write your own applications you have to design your applications you have to build your softwares and use it right so the platform it provides the platform allowing end users to develop run and manage applications without complexity and building and maintaining the infrastructure here we are not going to build in uh, build any our infrastructure it is kind of Uh, the house which you are going to do for the interior but in case of infrastructure you are building your own house and exterior interior everything but here we are going to only focus on your interior part that means we are going to focus on our how good applications we can build we can develop right those things will be because they are just giving you a platform like their platform example aws binstock heroku google app engine will just uh, see all these services i'll show you when we'll do the lab exercises okay now next is uh, caas that is called container as a service and next one is faas as function as a service so these two recently been added this named as container as a service and function as service but mostly if you are going for the interviews you would answer this three ias pas and saas ias pas and saas okay this three you have to tell and you have to remember what being used for it is very simple if you understand the concept what this ias and what things you will get it and uh, i'll give you example for other examples where you clearly understand what this means for okay similarly for caas it is container as a service so what happens it provides a container based virtualization in which container engines or orchestration and the underlying computer resources delivered to the customer okay so the container as a service you will not understand what this exactly the container is we have a um, um, uh, class of container 
and which uh, we are going to use the tool of docker and kubernetes that time you will completely know what this container is actually okay and uh, these are the services container services being provided by different uh, service provider aws ecs eks google gke azure scs and all these things once you understand what is the container and started working on that you will know what the services is and uh, why you are going to use okay because this container based service actually managed by google uh, because uh, sorry managed not by google only google has different and aws has go different azure has different okay uh, services so you don't have to set up any container services or anything you are just going to get their services and use it but uh, i will show you from the scratch how you can create your own containers and use it that also in our container classes okay next one is the fast like function as service it provides platform allowing customer to develop run and manage application functionality it's kind of apis you are you just going to use their functions or apis and use that small as some apis in your application okay that's api being used as name as aws lambda google cloud functions and all these things i'll show you all these uh, in our classes okay why to use as aws lambda why to use google cloud functions and all so just remember this is being used for that okay so here is very important to just uh, have a look on this who will manage what if you have a private cloud on premises private cloud everything only is under your control you have to manage everything the data and accesses the applications run runtime operating system virtual machine computing networking storage everything will be managed by you only you have to hire the manpower you have to get uh, the required engineers for that and you have to set up the private cloud so in case of private cloud remember if you get any kind of interview questions or they ask you you have just know that these are the things you are going to in case of private cloud you have to only manage okay but in, in case of infrastructure as a service IAS, what is that? The storage, networking and compute. This infrastructure only they will be providing to you. Infrastructure as a service. These compute, network and storage they will, they, they will be providing to you. And the rest of the things whatever you are going to use, you have to manage it. The data access, application, runtime, operating system, virtual machines and all all these things will be under your control you have to manage it you have to maintain it okay and for platform as a service see only application and data access the rest of the things they are providing storage networking compute virtual machine operating system runtime everything will be managed by the cloud service provider they are providing all these things and you don't have to worry about that you have to focus on building the application and data access the next one is the software as a service which they are providing everything only the data and access you will manage whatever the data will be generated whatever the access you need you have to manage it only the access part and the data part in case of software because the software already they are providing to you like the gmail as i told like the uh, gmail application right they are providing to a software like mailing application what you are accessing it you are it is the access part is under your control or whatever the data also it is under your control nobody is going to see that one right so and the applications where it is running in which machine it is running and which compute power it is using what are the networking what are the storage everything will be managed by the cloud service provider now i think it is very much clear to you right what are the things are there and uh, how it is uh, being classified and how it is being used in the cloud area okay so far do you have guys any doubt no okay clear uh, good so clear. we can move on 
okay so next this is very important uh, terms you have to remember you may get questions what is the region what is the region whenever you use any cloud you should understand the region and there are lots of terms are there we will just go with that in AWS the region is a physical location around the world where they keep the group of data center remember the group of data center in AWS region is a physical location around the world where they keep the group of data centers okay and each region consists of multiple isolated and physical separated availability zones here we got another two terms that is data center what is data center and what is availability zone we'll explain them in later also in the slides okay later slides and remember AWS Hajj 25 regions around the world and every time they are trying to create a new and in India we have two regions okay one is Asia Pacific Mumbai another one is Asia Pacific Hyderabad okay two regions of uh, AWS has two regions in India one is already established that is the Asia Pacific Mumbai but the Hyderabad, Hyderabad one is yet to open. It is already in construction. It, they have not opened to the market. Okay. It is uh, maybe uh, this year or next year it will be open to the market. The Hyderabad one. But Asia Pacific Mumbai is already functional. Okay. Remember AWS has 25 regions. And maybe next coming few years it may increase it. So you have to always upgrade your skills. Okay. Now you understood what is the region is, right? Now, okay, so if you see this diagram right uh, here, this region will have multiple data centers will be there, okay? Multiple data centers, multiple availability zone. We'll just explain what these availability zones are for, okay? Now let's see for availability zone. What is this availability zone? Availability zones are distinct isolated locations within an AWS region. So we know what is the region now. Now what is the availability zone? Availability zones are distinct isolated locations within an AWS region. There are 80 availability zones currently AWS has. 80, 80 availability zone, 25 regions, 80 availability zones currently AWS has one availability zone may have one or multiple data center see one region has one or multiple availability zone and one availability zone could have one or multiple data center just remember okay one region can have multiple availability zone and one availability zone will have multiple data centers so these availability zones it short form is AJ okay AJ these availability zone offer us the ability to operate production the ability to operate productions applications and databases that are more highly available fault tolerant and scalable I'll show you this when to use this availability zone and what is the concept okay you will be um, in your company you will be using if uh, production support you will be guys will be working you would be remembering the disaster recovery right disaster recovery that is dr you might be following the dr plan and all these things when we talk about a secondary server primary server and secondary server so the primary server will be always your primary the production server and the secondary will be your dr server that means we are putting our primary server in one availability zone and our secondary server in a different availability zone. Suppose in Mumbai Pacific, Asia Pacific Mumbai, we have three availability zones. Okay. Actually, in Asia Pacific Mumbai, AWS provide three availability zones. There will be in three different locations. Okay. If availability zone, availability zone one or a it is named as a b c if it is a has your 
production server and C is having your DR server. In case of a natural calamities like suppose in case of flood, in case of uh, cyclone or anything is uh, your network out is gone in availability zone A, your availability zone B will be there to serve you in case of any natural disaster. So your production will be the server if down then your disaster server will be up immediately to serve your purpose right. So that's why multiple availability zone that is high availability design most of the companies they follow it. 99% companies they do it or some startup companies 90% companies they do it some startup companies they may not they cannot afford it they cannot spend more money on that because it's very costly if you're going for multiple servers okay now this region suppose availability zone 1 if you see this diagram availability zone 2 and availability zone 3 this region is having three availability zone and if you see i'll show you how you can find it out this availability zones and all these things some, uh, some regions will have uh, two availability zones some regions will have three availability zones some regions will have four availability zones okay so now what is a data center a data center is a facility a, yeah please uh uh, Ranjit, I have a, sorry to interrupt you. No problem. Uh, so, uh, if you can go back to the previous uh, 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 slides only. Mm -hmm. uh, so, there you were talking about the region and availability zone. Yeah. So, I believe like uh, the availability zone works on the uh, like kind of clone, like all the data must be synced together uh, at certain point of time or how frequently they sync the data so that like if, if any of the uh, this um, re, uh, this availability zone mm -hmm. gets uh, into any uh, climate you know or anything happens to that particular so that like the people uh, can get connected with the other zone yes so I think so the data must be shared in between uh, I believe exactly that's true so whenever we are keeping our servers in the two different availability zones suppose Z1 and Z2 we are just keeping two servers in two different zones if the production server and the DR server should be always synced between them because the data whatever is being written to the Z1 it should be all same time be written to the Z2 in case of Z1 is down Z2 should be up with the same data whatever the Z1 is having right this syncing between actually AWS automatically takes care also you have the ability to set up the syncing capacity, syncing windows and backup windows, everything you have to do the setups. How frequently you need the data to be backed off, the data to be synced, okay. See whenever we are doing, there are a few concepts, few terms are there when we cover the database part, the RDS part, the database part, that time I will just explain you how the data are being synced how the data are being backed up so that in time the data can be recovered or data can be used by the server okay yes definitely it will be synced otherwise no point of having two servers if the data is not synced okay okay thank you yeah, yeah. so uh, next one is the data center the data center is a facility a dedicated space within a building or a group of buildings composed of networked computers and stores that business and organizations used to organize, process, store and disseminate large amount of data. So you would have seen in your companies, right? You will be seeing this kind of cables, networkings and uh, um, this um, kind of storage amount, everything will be there, right? So you will be see a data center, that's called a data center which you will have lots of network, lots of wires, lots of cables, lots of storage, CPUs, um, some kind of networking, everything will be set up in your, in a house, okay, in a place where all these data will be there. So now, the data center is gone, now the edge location. What is this edge location? The edge location, if you see here, <coughs> uh, 
okay the edge location it's a, a site that cloud front uses to cache copies of your content for faster delivery to users at any location there are currently 17 cloud front edge locations in india 17 cloud front edge locations in india four in hyderabad another four in new delhi three in bangalore three in mumbai and two in chennai and one in kolkata i'll tell you what is this edge locations i'll explain you so remember these are the things there are currently 17 cloud front edge locations in india four in hyderabad uh, four in new delhi three in bangalore three in mumbai two in chennai and one in kolkata so what is this edge location the edge location uses cache copies of your content for faster delivery to users at any locations that is the term to use but how it works <coughs> okay suppose think about your netflix your favorite cdn that uh, video network right if you think about netflix the netflix server will be in suppose in california or usa some locations will be there in california suppose and you are connecting you are just logging to the your netflix account and your videos and everything stored on a server right and you are going to watch it if your location if your content is stored in california and you are going to uh, see it from in from Bangalore or in Chennai you are located and you are going to watch some videos how quickly your data is getting offered and how quickly you are watching the video right that's most important and how they manage the clouds because Netflix is in on cloud only right how they manage it by using the edge locations because the first time you log into the Netflix and watch the video what will happen the content whatever you are going to watch will be cached to your automatically downloaded to your nearest edge location suppose you are in chennai so there are a two edge location in chennai right so the content will automatically cast and will be stored in the nearest edge locations and you are in chennai and you are just watching it so now your data will be near to you that's why it is faster simple right the same thing if you are going to use facebook now facebook in india india uh, domain you are using suppose you are using any things which are uh, your server you are watching a server which are in singapore which are in singapore and you want to get some data some documents some um, image file what will happen same concepts applies here also once you log into the server you get the data it will be cached to your nearest edge location so next time when you will view it it will be faster okay so see the diagram here suppose it is the server you can see the region where your data center is available and you are going to here is the users from different locations around the world is going to view the data what, what will happen so these are the once the data is being viewed by this user everything will be cached to the nearest edge location if Ankit in Bengaluru and he wants to he is just viewing anything from this region suppose okay what will happen the data will be stored to the nearest edge locations in Bengaluru there are three in Bengaluru right any nearest locations to Ankit will be stored next time you will get it it will be faster that's why the content delivery network cdn that's called content delivery network we have a different uh, class for cloud front and cdn separate class so that time uh, we'll get more details and uh, we'll see how we can set up our own edge locations okay we'll have a lab class for that now you understood what is the edge locations for right I have one question here. Yes, please. Hello. Yeah, yeah, please. Yeah. So, so uh, as you were saying, like cloud front, what it does, like it creates a cache mm -hmm. for like whatever the content they are looking out for. 
तो हाउ लाइक सो इट्स द कैश विल बी अ यूजर स्पेसिफिक और इट विल बी एज लोकेशन स्पेसिफिक फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन एंड द सेकंड वन इज लाइक हाउ व्हाट इज द टाइम ड्यूरेशन ऑफ कैश टू बी परसिस्टिंग ओवर देयर लाइक व्हेन दिस कैश विल बी रिमूव्ड सो देयर विल बी सम टाइम लिमिटेशंस आल्सो या दैट्स गुड क्वेश्चंस ओके डेफिनेटली the data as whatever we are using it will be never user specific if it is a private stuff if you are uh, using the edge location for your company purposes and data will be by being by your own company member then it can be user specific but we never use that way we never set up solution architect we never set up that one because the data is always will be public facing right suppose we both you and i are suppose in one location and i am viewing one data i am getting one data or one image file and that image file could be a film related or anything and that is public facing right In the same time suppose you are also trying to view the same content what will happen next time it will not connect to the server and download again it will be cached already and you will get it so it will be never user specific it will be public specific it will be edge location specific so whenever you are going to uh, get it one data because it will be that location specific because these areas locations uh, uh, people are getting on uh, viewing this data this content so the content will be cached to the nearest edge location okay and about the deletion of the data and all so yes if you want to delete you can set up a deletion time time frame so that it will be automatically the cache will be cleared the automatically the cache will be cleared by the uh, limited durations if you set to after one month or set it will be automatically deleted but by default it will be stored there think about facebook think about uh, netflix prime video and all right they never delete it because once they delete it next time any users from that locations is trying to view it it will be faster time it will take faster the bandwidth will be increased right it will be take more time to view that one so they they keep all the cache uh, all the informations all the content in the cache itself but if you are a small company and you cannot afford that one because cache also it will store some amount right you, you don't want to afford it you have to delete it after certain time so you can use it to delete i'll show you how to set up that also okay okay thank you yeah welcome so next is uh, okay edge location you understood fine so i think the slide is over mm. okay that is center and edge location so that's all about whole cloud and uh, we understood now it's time to go and explore the cloud in real time and in lab how we can use it and i'll just tell you each services now you understood the overview and uh, about the cloud only now we are going to jump into one of the service provider aws and we'll so uh, we'll see how we can use the aws services okay so let's see uh, so you have to just uh, if you have uh, your um okay let me tell you so first things i think you uh, guys uh, will not have any uh, cloud account or aws account remember this you have to just use aws.amazon.com okay aws.amazon.com let me just explain something about this aws aws provides 12 months of free 12 months means one year of free usage and there are few services there are few services which is which are entirely free which are entirely free to use and few services are 12 months of free few services are entirely lifetime free you can use those services free of cost you don't have to pay anything that's the public cloud okay um 
what you have to do you have to just uh, log in to uh, use aws.amazon.com go to the sign in to console okay uh, if you have account just click on this or <coughs> sorry here uh, if you have account you can directly log in and remember you can just use your email id only once to create the account once the email id created uh, used to create the account that will be that that email id will be your root account that email id will be your root account and that will be valid uh, and your lifetime but free only up to 12 months one second let me plug in my charger my laptop is going to okay so 12 months of free uh, remember and uh, okay let me show you create new aws account click on create new aws account so provide the sign up for aws right root user email address okay so let me use key source account case dot key source one suppose okay uh case dot key source at gmail so this will be your root user email address used for account recovery and some administrative functions it will have control administrative control this account will be now administrative okay and that is will be up to you can use lifetime you can use lifetime but 12 months free and same email id cannot be used to create another account remember okay so account aws account name you can choose a name for your account you can give a name also you can change it later okay so verify email address okay so kisar can you give your code verification code if you have received it <coughs> so it will be in gmail right oh yeah gmail account okay just a second yeah it's 3 double yes, 3 triple 5 3 triple 5 8 6 Eight six. Okay. It's your email address has been made. Okay, so I'm setting up a root password. Um, continue. Step one to five. So here the contact information how do you plan to use AWS so never use for business uh, you have to uh, it will be not free. So here free tier offers see if you see here always AWS accounts can explore three different types of free offers depending on the product you use always free that never expires you can always be 12 months free as I told you and there are few things at trial basis okay based on the trial you just use it and there will be few paid services you have to pay for that okay that is never free so lots of things will get it which will be required it will be under free services and there will be few you have, i'll show you which are you have to pay for that okay so full name and just give a phone number here so this is Oh, sorry what happened okay sorry so we have to use the account type I did not select anything so suppose use for personal 
okay for your own project personal no very useful business if you have a organization if you have an organization you own organization you can go for a business okay so personal continue here it's very important things to remember they will provide uh, they'll be asking to sign off okay uh, for the billing informations you have to pay your credit card or debit card informations so why they need all this because um, uh, if you are going to use uh, the services which are not free or the services beyond the free usage beyond the free usage if you used they will charge you right if you used uh, three days or four days extra what are the free things but you used extra three four days they will charge extra three four days amount only okay and they will charge in dollar and it will be converted into rupees too and you have to pay for that and uh, remember you can set up si or you can pay monthly also that's up to you even though by mistake aws will provide good service if by mistake you used the services and you are new to that you don't know and it charged suppose few amount to you if you call the customer support and request them they will revert it back one of my student uh, last in 2009 2020 uh, 2020 maybe what happened um, that guy he didn't know um, he started one of the uh, development tool which is not free i had told him but he did not uh, he just thought of using it and uh, you know, terminated the whenever whatever service you use always after using terminate it but what happened he did not terminate it. he forgot to terminate it and uh, that uh, development uh, services was running almost around one month or two months something and some around 45,000 after two or three months he got the bill uh, it was running and he he didn't even uh, notice that one uh, so uh, he, he he does not know that uh, he has started and he forgot to run that what happened he, uh, immediately he called out the customer service and they reverted back to the amount to his and he checked it and see everything should be genuine when he checked he when he uh, when the company like aws uh, sorry, aws right uh, uh, people they logged into their account to his account and checked everything they found genuine like this guy doesn't know anything and uh, just opened the services use the service but he forgot to terminate it and here they found everything is okay if the person is telling true then what happened they reverted everything back all the money they reverted back okay okay fine so credit card informations you have to pay and uh, what will happen uh, so they will just uh, will not charge you for usage below AWS free tier limit we may temporarily hold off dollar one usd or an equivalent upon in local currency as a pending transaction for three to for, uh, to verify your account okay that means dollar one usd they are going to charge immediately they will charge but that amount will be refunded immediately don't get scared they will just one dollar they will charge and then they will refund it back okay so let me just give this credit card information sorry if i have okay i am just stopping uh, my screen okay i'm just providing then uh, okay so you have to provide your credit card number expiration date card holder number cvb and you have to just give your pan number if you have or if you don't want to give you can uh, leave it and then verify and continue okay so i'm just stopping screen sharing and then i'll go ahead okay so it is now done uh, so confirm confirm your identity so just text message for verifications you have to provide the mobile number okay so it's country region india okay so just give okay uh, so verification code kiso can you give it uh, i think uh, you would have received a message in your mobile yeah, 9066 90 okay. continue good okay so once you log in right so it will be it will ask you to use the support plan 
see basic support free account developer support uh, what is this support plan means if you in case you got any issues or anything happen they will provide to you support basic support free developer support they'll charge 29 dollar per month and if you are going for a business account they'll go business support they'll give you uh, they'll charge you 100 dollar per month okay i'll go for free now complete sign up okay so congratulations now go to the aws management console got it so now okay so let's uh, go ahead and uh, my role is you can say it like uh, you can say either student or software developer engineer okay or uh, i am interested in devops submit thank you now let's sign to your console So read root user. Okay, you have to provide the root user here. So let me just give it case dot gmail.com. Next give the password. Sign in. good so we are successfully able to create the account and able to log in to the aws management console so see variable insights uh, switch to the new console home that's good they have designed the new console home every time they upgrade their console every time they upgrade their console and provide new appearance new look to the console okay so you can see here all those details available here the services as i told uh, we are going to use almost around 18 services i'm going to um, uh, tell you but aws provide more than 500 services we are not we should we are not going to learn everything and it will be not useful also based on the requirement you have to use the services whatever you need okay now how you'll find it out you can see in the top letter in left hand side uh, you'll see the services if you click that you'll find lot of services here analytics application integrations database you know, containers business application media services satellite robotic storage and all things compute also will be there let me show you one thing compute if i click compute you'll get lots of compute services here this is the category and these are the services okay we'll just learn more things um, on upcoming classes so leave it here just know here the services and the recent, recently visited and whatever things so what I have used it has automatically picked up from here based on my browser cache setup the cookies or the cache whatever that automatically picked up that are the because Kishore has never used it right whatever I had used it it was automatically captured here okay fine and if you can see here you will have the Mumbai selected here that is the region if you click it here will have these regions here that 25 regions of our setup here and remember this us east that northern virginia in virginia northern virginia is the r d center of aws what is this r d center all the new functionality new services new feature they added or they develop they do testing here itself northern virginia so if you see here that uh, regions are available but the northern virginia always will have more services than other regions based on the region they provide the services okay remember what are the services you will find in ohio region ohio region right us east you may not find in asia pacific mumbai and if you want to switch the region here suppose uh, you want to create a server on singapore region then you have to select asia pacific singapore and these are the region code and you have to remember all these things whenever you are using frequently uh, it will automatically you remember don't worry about that 
AP South 1 is Mumbai, uh, AP North East 1 is sorry, Southeast 1 is Singapore. Select and you will be automatically into the Singapore region. It will be refreshed and you will go to the Singapore region console. See, it will be Singapore region. And we will get similar kind of the services available. It may be more or less than the Mumbai region. Okay. You will get the services here also. Fine. And here you can see the account related stops, accounts, everything, settings and all. And we will discuss all these things um, later on the classes uh, once we move forward to the AWS. Okay. So, that is all for today's uh, class guys. Um, so, next we will meet up on Saturday 9 a.m. Okay. So, what we will do? Uh